Well, it is finally that time of year, September 1st, first day of meteorological fall. Uh, official fall doesn't start till September 22nd, but the weather has changed. Humidity, although up a little bit today, down overall. I'm just happy. Um, fall colors are just around the corner, Halloween, and of course, fall crafts. And we're gonna start off 2019 with some wonderful releases. The first project here is our Marigold Wagon. Uh, it's gonna be a beautiful centerpiece featuring some new flowers, uh, one of which I've already assembled, just to make sure that I know what I'm doing before I show you how to do it. And let's just jump right in. We're gonna begin with the actual flowers. So let's get those out here. So real quick, there's the wagon's going to feature three flowers total and obviously I already have one assembled and this three different colors so when your pieces are all cut out you want to sort of organize them by color okay so you want to organize your flowers by color when we assemble them we're going to start with the smallest piece and then work our way up to the largest piece and obviously I've done some inking on these and with the marigolds you can go pretty heavy on the ink as they're they're pretty vibrant in nature so don't be afraid to really throw some ink on there and then we've got the little coordinating stamen pieces that go with that so uh, and the calyx make sure that you just have three flowers obviously you're only seeing two here because i've already done one so get all those together and we can begin shaping these and getting them ready now you're going to need a little hibachi skewer Okay, and take some, uh, some floral tape. And I like to kind of wrap that first as it gives me a little bit of an adhesive surface for when we actually put the flowers on. They kind of tend to stick a little bit better. Don't wrap it too thick because then you'll have a hard time getting the paper through there. But we tried to make these little holes in the center about the diameter of one of these skewers. Okay, so you don't have to wrap it all the way down because we are gonna end up trimming this to about six inches, or about four, maybe four or five inches. Okay, so we've got that. And we can start with, again, the smallest petal. And for this, I'm gonna use an eighth inch dowel. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm just gonna wrap this nice and tight around that eighth inch dowel. Just really give it a good squeeze so that it cups like that. It eventually is going to kind of come apart a little bit, but you wanna to try to wrap that as tightly as you can, right in the center. Just wrap those petals around that dowel. And we're gonna be doing a lot of that. So you could, if you want to create somewhat of an assembly line, just do all this first. And then, and then we can work on the stamens and then we can put all of the petals on and that's really what you're looking for you can, you can fold them in a little bit too and that's fine and it's essentially the same process for every single petal so just pop your dowel right in the center give it a little bend and then just wrap it around that dowel to get the petals like that okay and we're gonna do that to all the petals and then we're gonna assemble our flower. So if you want, at this point, I'm not gonna do anything different until I actually start assembling the flower. So if you wanna fast forward, or if you wanna pause me, you wanna do this to all of the petals for all the flowers if you want, okay? And with this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the two sides separately since the petals are getting a little bit larger. I'm just gonna wrap them nice and tight around that dowel and the little fibers in the paper. You're gonna remember how I want them to look because we're essentially reshaping all those little fibers in there. Okay. Just wrapping that around the dowel like that. And I definitely could have, could have inked these a little bit more, but I think that once they're all curled up, and together, we're really only gonna see 
the tips and then a little bit of the inner part of it. So I think that's plenty, but by all means, have a field day with the inking on these because this, this little wagon is gonna be a pretty rustic looking piece and there's no harm in adding more color. Okay, so almost done here. I've got one more little petal and hopefully, so again, I'm just kind of putting it right at the tip, pushing the tip around it and then just kind of wrapping it around. Just like that, figure out your best way of doing that. Did you get it? Hope you got it. Okay, last one here. And then the assembly of these is gonna be very simple. It's literally just sliding it right onto that little hibachi stick, shish kebab stick, whatever you wanna call it. I think uh, if you're looking for these, on Amazon, I would type in hibachi skewer or just skewer. They come in usually like a pack of 100, so you'll have plenty of them if you want to make a ton of flowers. Okay, so now we've got our little coordinating stamen piece here. Okay, now if you want, just to make life easier for you, you can take a larger dowel and kind of curl it a little bit just to give it a natural curl like that, and that's going to help it um, stay on the stick uh, a little bit better. So what I would do, uh, you can use a piece of tape if you want, just to tape the first part of it on. Okay, and you can go a little bit past this little area here if you want. I think that it stays on better and all these stamen will eventually hide it. Okay, I'm just gonna use some glue. I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue. So I'm gonna start, you'll notice that on this side, it's flat, this side has this little nub just throw a tiny little dot of glue on there. You don't need a lot. And we'll begin just wrapping it around the end of the stick here, the skewer, and then wrap it around like once or twice. Try to keep it nice and lined up so that this bottom part stays flush on itself the whole way through. And then let me clean off that nozzle real quick. And then just do a very, very thin line of glue all the way down this little area here so it sticks to itself and we're just going to wrap that around itself get it nice and tight and if you kind of get glue all over the place it's okay this is all going to be pretty hidden once we get the flowers on there and it does help to bring it down and not right at the very tip of the skewer just for stability okay try to keep it nice and level there we go Hello there, fruit fly. You really think this is a marigold, don't you? Go, shoo. All right, and then we have, to have that little bit of glue right at the end. I may just throw a tiny bit more on there so that this stays nice and closed. Okay, and let's wrap it up and close it off. Okay, so there's our little stamen piece. And I did also ink that. I just kind of took my, my little ink pad and uh, my, my felt applicator, I should say, I just kind of ran it right along the edge just to add a little bit of color to it. And now while we have this, we can kind of take these and flare them out a little bit so they're not so bunched together because once we get the flower on there, it may be a little difficult to get your fingers in there and really work these out. So if you can, just kind of flare them out a little bit. They'll probably end up uh, going back to the center, but at least, at least we got a little bit done there. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to find the smallest petal, which is this guy here, and we're going to just slide them right on. Just need a tiny little bit of glue on the, the, the bottom of the stamen piece here. Not a lot. You don't want to overdo it. I overdid it on the first one. And then you've got the pointy end here. Just slide it through, and I kind of put my fingers underneath the flower, and I just kind of roll it back and forth so that I don't accidentally tear the paper as it's going up. It does make it a lot easier to get it up there. Okay, and just keep going until it hits the very butt of that stamen piece. Get it nice and flush there. And voila. Okay, and there's the first part of your flower. Very simple. And then as you probably have already guessed, 
and do the same thing with the next one. Okay, so just a tiny little dot of glue here on the bottom of the previous flower, maybe a couple. Just twirl it around, add a few little dabs of glue. Find the next largest piece and stick your thumbs and your, well, your thumb and your, your pointer finger underneath there as kind of a support. And then I'm just twirling the, the stick as I'm working my way up. And when we set this thing and place it in its final little destination, I want to make sure that we offset these petals. So right now they're on top of each other. If you offset them a little bit, you can see how that looks. And that will make them look more full. That's what we want. I want them to be nice and full. There we go. You can see that. Let me cut this so I can bring it lower and keep it in focus. There we go. Okay, so that's looking really nice. All right, next one. So it's the next largest. We're going from smallest to largest. And just a little dab of glue there. Now I don't have a point on this anymore, but that's okay. I should still be able to feed it through there. No problem. There we go. And just twirl it until it goes up. Again, offsetting it slightly so that each little flower, each little petal, I should say, gets its, gets some sunlight. Luckily, we don't really need to water these, but you know what I mean. There we go. Okay. And just make sure that it's really hitting that last layer so that it's getting some glue so it will stay in place. Okay, there we go. And the next largest one, and these are almost the same size, so make sure you get the right one. And I guess if you don't, it's so they're so similar in size that I don't think anyone's going to notice. Okay, and again, just offsetting the petals. Come on, buddy. And you can see here, maybe this angle is a little bit better how they're not on top of each other. This is on top of the other one. This is just offsetting it a tad. And that just makes it look more full. I think this is my favorite flower. I love it. This is going right on my table. <clears throat> I still have 4th of July stuff on my dining room table, but this is gonna take its place, absolutely. I'll have to post a picture of that when it's done. I'll be decorating for fall this week. All right, final, final set of petals here. Just pop it right through that little hole, twist it upward, and again, just offset it. Make sure it's not sitting right on top of that last layer. And there we go. And there's your beautiful flower. And we can kind of finesse the little petals here as needed, but you know, as mentioned in the past, there's nothing really perfect in nature, so it's okay if it's you know a little bit um, imperfect. All right, so now the little calyx part. Um, these are you don't need to do anything crazy to these. Uh, I did ink these, and you can see there's a series of little score marks on there. So you want to fold everything at the score marks, and it's going to create a five-sided little box, so to speak, and it kind of tapers down to uh, a little thin area. And now there's one little section without uh, a little calyx piece on there, a little petal. So we're gonna throw some glue on that and we're gonna glue it to the inside of its neighbor, just like that. And you can kind of just squeeze it together like so. And that's what we have. We end up with a piece like that. You can flare these out. Now, I'm not even going to put glue on this because I'm going to connect this all with some with some floral tape here. So we just slide it up the um, the floral stick and just pop it right up to the bottom there, nice and flush. And then we can take our floral foam or sorry, floral tape, and just start right at the very tip of that that little calyx piece and just work your way down to make everything look nice and seamless. There we go. And there you have it. Beautiful. And you can see how they look together. Okay. So 
So I am gonna walk you through that process one more time if you want. There's a good opportunity to pause and fast forward while you put on some music or whatever it is that you wanna put on. And I'm gonna assemble this flower and then we'll move on to the actual assembly of the wagon. So you can kind of scrub through and when you find, when you start seeing me put together the wagon, you can stop and pick right up where, uh, where I'm at. So again, this is uh, basically an eighth inch dowel and I am just curling those petals together and put, kind of just pushing it down in the center. I got two fingers on either side of the petal, forcing it down and then curling it over onto the dowel, nice and tight, especially with these smaller ones. Oops, wow. He's ready. Okay, so we'll do that this one to this one here. And as I noticed that as we get to the larger petals, um, I kind of just did the edges. Uh, so I did this twice on each little side of each petal instead of just once in the middle because I think it would be a little too much of a curl on those larger petals. Okay. There we go. And the next one, I think these are probably some of my favorite projects, the little floral centerpieces. I love assembling our flowers and our art director, Ron, does a great job with the design of the flowers. They always look very lifelike and they're just a, a joy to assemble. And I hope you guys feel the same way. And of course, can't leave our engineer Diana out. I gotta give her kudos for bringing his, his designs to life. I actually just did a, a live stream on Facebook um, where, and I, I already have glue on this, so pardon it, pardon the little glue on there, but um, where I showed the sketches that he provides um, when he's designing the products to Diana who takes that and brings it to life digitally. So definitely check that out on our official Facebook page. I had one of our dreamers actually do a, a studio tour and I said, hey, well, let's do a live stream and let's get everybody else involved and kind of showed the ins and outs of the studio here. And we did some giveaways and it was fun. All right, so again, now with the larger petals here, I am just kind of, I'm, I'm curling each side here instead of trying to do it in the middle. It's kind of the same thing. It, it'll end up with the same result. I just feel like it's not gonna crease the center as much um, if we do it that way. And I'm gonna try to avoid any, any rigidness in this flower. I want it to kind of just flow nicely. How are your flowers coming along here? You guys doing good? I think uh, this is a, you know, a repetitive thing. Once you, once you get it, you get it. And then you won't want to stop making them. They're really pretty. Okay. Almost done here. So again, you can skip ahead here. You don't have to watch me do this again, but I just want to make sure that I'm thorough. And I don't leave anything out. The more I show it, the more angles you'll see it at, and the, the less uh, questions we'll have when it comes to the assembly. Okay, so you know what we can do just to kind of speed up the process here. I did this last, last time, but uh, we'll take the calyx piece here and we will get this all ready to go. Okay, and again, We've got the little tab here without a pedal on it. That's the tab that's going to be receiving our glue. Just like that. And then take it, fold it over and connect it behind the piece on the other side that has the pedal. And I'm just kind of squeezing it together. It's, uh, it's got an odd number of sides so it won't fold flat completely, but that's okay, it still works. And I think it might have glued it together, glued it shut. There we go, okay. And then the calyx the little petals just kind of stick out and that's ready for assembly. So um, just like we did before, I've got my little hibachi skewer. I'm gonna take my floral tape and we're going to cover it 
with the floral tape. And I tried to match up. I've got, you know, I've got a few different shades of floral tape. I wanted to use a floral tape that matches up as closely as possible with, you know, the greens that we're using in this project, just so that everything is nice and seamless and hidden. Okay, so let's go ahead and take that and wrap it down the dowel. Don't forget to stretch that out to release that tackiness. That'll help it stick a lot better. Okay, that's enough there. All right, so now we'll grab our little stamen piece <clears throat> and I'm just gonna run a dowel across it like so, just to curl it. And uh, I'll show you the little tape method should you wanna do that instead. You can just take a little piece of tape and you can put that down on your table. I would put the, put the hibachi skewer just a little bit past the, um, you know, the, the flat solid part that doesn't contain the actual stamen pieces. And you can just kind of glue that down so that it doesn't move for you. Just like that. Okay. Just like that. And then that'll hold it in place if you, you know, have any issues with that. It's a good little anchor. And then you can wrap this around. Okay, and then we can begin wrapping the rest of it around. I actually, I think it's just easier if you glue it, but whatever, whatever is more comfortable for you. And again, we're gonna take our glue and just do a nice, really thin line all the way down and just wrap that around that, that stick there, the skewer. Yeah, I actually prefer without the tape, but again, whatever works. Try to keep it nice and aligned. Nice and tight if possible. And you know, you can see here that the tape method is not sticking to the stick as well. I think it's uh, preventing the tackiness of the floral tape from really grabbing onto it. But hey, you know what? There's a fix for everything. And if that happens, see what happens, what's happening here? It's not sticking, that's okay. We'll fix it and we'll fix it. You can either fix it by, well, see this tape here, no good. I just didn't get it. I didn't get it on there well enough. It should work, but <clears throat> it really didn't. Just throw a little bit of glue in there, right in that little hole and just pop that in. And you're gonna have to leave this sit for a little bit until it really holds. Or you can get the mighty um, hot glue gun and do it that way. I'm gonna let that warm up for a second <clears throat> and we'll use a little bit of hot glue just to make sure that that doesn't move and stays in place so that we don't end up having issues when we start putting the pedals on. Now, while we're waiting for the hot glue to warm up, you can take the little stamen pieces and just flare them out a little bit, give them some room to breathe. And we're pretty much ready to start putting our pedals on here. So I'm gonna give this hot glue a minute and we'll get rocking here. All right, so I'm just throwing a little bit of hot glue on the bottom of the stamen piece here, just because I kind of messed up. Um, when I rolled it and didn't roll it tight enough. Now, while that hot glue is still fresh, you can go ahead and get that first pedal up there and just pop it right on there. Now, if you want to use hot glue for all of them, you can. It's up to you. It does set a lot faster, obviously, so there's no harm in doing that. Um, I'm going to stick with my glue because I don't like... I don't like those funky little strands of, of hot glue that I end up getting all over the place. So again, grabbing the next piece here and just twisting it up the little stem. And don't forget to offset it so that they're not fighting for space. I'll do it this way so you can see. Don't put them right on top of each other like that. You wanna offset it just a tad and just slide it right on up until it butts up against that last layer. 
just like that. Okay, and we'll go to the next one here. Okay, and the next largest size. We're going from smallest to largest, don't forget. And just twisting it right up. Make sure you offset it. And pop that right into place. I guess you know that getting that stamen piece in there with the hot glue is actually very helpful because you can give it a little bit more force as you apply the petals and it doesn't, uh, doesn't budge as much as it would if you're using regular glue that hasn't completely set yet. Okay. So again, so now after we do this, we're going to add our little leaves on here as well. We've got, got to put the leaves on all three of them still. And that will go quick too. We're just going to use some floral tape for that. And we don't even need to use glue for that. So that'll go quick as well. All right, last one. Twist it right on up and get it nice and offset. There we go. That's about right. And just give that a push. And there we go. Beautiful. Beautiful little flower. They're so realistic. Okay. Now we're going to take the little calyx piece that we've already assembled and just pop it up nice and flush up against the flower, just like that. And we'll grab our floral tape and get that to stick. Keep that in place. There we go. And that's enough there. Okay, so flowers are done. Let me trim this off a little bit. And there's our, our beautiful marigolds. That would be a cute little bouquet. Okay, so now we do have some leaves. And grab those. I'm gonna probably do, I think I probably have some extras here. And you can, you can add more if you'd like. Uh, I'm probably gonna do two for each flower. Uh, let's see, two there, two there. And we've got these extra ones here that we can kind of add into the final arrangement should we need to. But for the flowers themselves, uh, I'm gonna use the pieces here that have three and three and then one in the center on, uh, on either side, okay? So what we're gonna do I'm going to grab a little bit of a thicker dowel and just kind of train this so it droops a little bit. Okay, just kind of like that. And um, I did ink these very subtly, just on one side. It's up to you if you want to do that. I think you've done enough inking at this point and maybe, you know, maybe you don't want to have to do that again. But um, either way. And then you want to pinch the, uh, just pinch the leaves right at the tip just to give them a little bit of dimension like that. You can see how the light is playing off of them very nicely when you do that. And if it helps, you can take a little skewer and just pop that in the center to help you get a, uh, a little better of a line. And then just pinch the tip like that. And when I pinch, I, it doesn't look very symmetrical, but it works. Okay, so we wanna do that to all of the leaves here, just to give them some, give them some life. So it doesn't just look like a piece of paper. And don't forget to pinch that tip. There you go. I think the, the skewer, putting it in the center like that, helps me get it more down the center. There we go. And of course you should have plenty of extra skewers here. Okay, so you can see what that looks like compared to just a regular piece of paper that you know, you've got, yeah, you know, you've got shadows, you've got highlights, you've got dimension, all these wonderful things that really bring the flowers to life. <clears throat> okay, so we'll do another one, and then we'll uh, we'll put the little little leaves here on just one of the flowers. I think uh, after you see me do it once, you'll get it, and if not, you can always rewind and watch me do it again. And then I'll do the rest of them off camera so I don't bore you. Okay, I think the hard part's pretty much done. Uh, after this, it's just the wagon. And that is, 
And that's a breeze. It's kind of just like assembling a box, so it won't take as long. Oh, I forgot to just kind of crease this a little bit and just kind of make it droop a little bit like that. Okay. And you see how there's a little area here before the leaves actually start. So the right just below where the leaves start, you want to kind of line that up with the beginning of where the calyx is. Okay. So you can see how I've got it lined up there. Hopefully let me do it at a different angle so you can see there's the, the, here, I'll use this to point. Okay. So the bottom of the calyx is right here. Okay. And what we want to do is we're going to put this up against the stem so that the top of the leaves right before where the actual leaves start meets the bottom of the calyx. Okay. So just like that, hopefully you can see that. Let me pop that right there. There you go. Okay. You'll see it. <clears throat> so let me just, uh, I'll start at the bottom actually with the floral tape and I'll just start wrapping it right at the bottom. Just make sure that you keep it nice and straight up and down as far as the positioning of the little leaves. Okay. And then just wrap that, just wrap that up until right about where the leaves start. And that's it right there. Okay. And then we can kind of droop those down. You can see how nice that looks. And then we're going to take the other one and just pop it right on the other side. You can offset it just a tad if you want. Okay. Just like that. And then we're going to wrap that one around the same way we did with the other one. Just start right at the bottom. Just wrap that around using your floral tape and then work your way up right up to that part there, just below where the actual leaves begin. And there we go. Okay. And there you go. You got yourself a, a beautiful little marigold there. Okay. And that's going to go right into the wagon. So again, go ahead and um, get your, get your leaves in place on the other two marigolds. And I will meet you back here so that we can begin putting together our wheel. I'm sorry, our wagon. Okay. So we have all of our flowers put together, complete with our little leaves there. So everything is ready to go as far as the flowers go. And now we can put together our wagon. And the first thing we're going to do is put together the little wagon wheels and I've got everything got everything sorted here. So each wheel is going to need one of these, one of these, two of these of the same color, and then our black piece here. And then this little one that's going to go in the center on the front. Okay. So I'm going to put together one of them because I don't need to show you how to do it four times. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. So we're going to start with the black layer here and you want to make sure that uh, well, we're going to grab these pieces here that have all the little details cut out of them. You want to make sure that you put your glue on these pieces and not on the black piece because you may not know exactly where to put the glue so that it doesn't show through any of these little cutouts here. Okay. So be careful when you do that. Make sure you apply the glue to this piece and not onto the black piece here. And that way we won't get any glue disasters happening. So all you need to do is just line that up with the black piece there. Okay. And just press that down, make sure it's nice and flat and it may help while everything is setting to put this underneath uh, like a mat or something so that it sets nice and flat for you. Okay. So we're going to flip it over now and we're going to grab the other piece that was just exactly like the piece we just worked on. And we're going to get our glue on this next piece here. Just be very, very sparse with the glue here. We don't want any of it leaking out onto the black part. And I've got a little bit of glue in there that I'm going to pull out because it's probably going to spill over onto the black. Again, just do your best to get that nice and lined up with our black middle piece. There we go. Okay. So now we've got the same thing on both sides. 
sandwiched, the black piece sandwiched between these two pieces. Okay, let's smush that down. Okay, now the front is gonna have just this little piece here like so. So let's get our glue on this thin little piece here. And that is going to sit right around the perimeter here. We got a little bit of glue there. Okay, just like that. Perfect. Just press that down nice and flat. And then the other side is going to go like that. And that again is going to add a little bit more stability and make everything look nice and finished and polished. Go, just match that up nicely. There we go. Perfect. So this is the back or the inside part of the wheel. And this is the front. And then of course we just need to put this little piece on to finish it off. Just like that. Try to get that nice and centered. And voila. Okay. So we're going to repeat this. We need four wheels, obviously. So we're gonna do this again three more times until you have all your wheels constructed. And again, as you're working on the next wheel, put this underneath a mat and maybe even put something heavy on it just to keep it nice and flat um, so that the glue can set and it'll set nice and flat. And then when it's you know actually holding up the weight of, the minimal weight of the flowers, it you know won't bend or fold as easily and it'll last a lot longer. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that underneath my mat and I'm gonna do the other three here and then I will meet you back and we'll put the wagon together. Okay, so we're on our last leg here. We're gonna to put together the actual wagon and you're gonna to wanna to find this piece. This is the main structure here and then these two pieces here. So you wanna get everything folded at the little score marks here. We're gonna join these pieces together to create the body of our little wagon here. So as you can see, pieces are gonna go just like this. We're gonna start by anchoring the bottom here to the main body. So go ahead and just get your, get your glue on this tab. I'm gonna work this glue right out to the very edge here just to make sure that everything looks nice and clean. And then you can take and you can lay this down flat if you want to and just line that up, get it nice and centered, as centered as you can. And then just fold that tab right over. You can move this out of the way and flip it down like this and take a look at that seam and make sure that it's nice and lined up and give that a press. Now this paper, this is actually a pattern paper that we're going with. It's got a nice, uh, vintagey, rustic looking red on it. And it's gonna show through once we put the rest of the panels on. Okay, so now before we do the other side, let's, or before we put the sides together, I should say, let's do the other side here, same thing. Let's get your glue on there. Make sure you get some of that glue out to the very edge there. Okay, and line it up. Get it nice and centered, as centered as you can. And press that down. Can fold it onto itself. And take a look at that seam. Make sure it's nice and aligned. That looks good. Okay. Now, you can just join the sides together. And of course, they're angled. So you wanna make sure that this piece lines up nicely with that piece there. Okay, so I'm just gonna take some glue, apply it to this tab here, and you wanna work that glue out to the edges. Okay, and just connect that as accurately as you can. Pretty straightforward, and you can put this down on your surface and press down from the inside to get that to really hold. And we can move this out of the way while we apply glue to the other side. Okay. 
I'll get that glue onto the edge. There we go. And get that nice and aligned, just like that. I'll put that down on my surface and press from the inside so we don't warp the paper. And that looks pretty good. Actually, a little bit off there. I'm going to redo that because I missed. Let me try that again. Okay. There we go. All right, so almost there. So it was going to be a really fun project, and I know that I know I'm going to see a lot of these. Would make a great little host hostess gift for Thanksgiving, or I I really going to have a hard time parting with this. I know it, so it's probably going to be front and center at my house and my dining room table. After this bundle is done, I am I am getting my fall stuff out. Okay, so other side here, same thing. Just get that glue on that tab, and we're gonna have to tuck it in a little bit and line that up nicely. Okay, and just press down from the inside, and that just leaves one more tab. I got a little bit of glue on the side of that, that's okay. We're gonna put some more panels on this so it's not the end of the world. And a little bit of glue there. It's kind of an awkward little piece, but more so because I can't get my finger in there to get that glue out to the edges, but that worked out nicely. Okay, so again, just line that up as accurately as you can. Just like that. And then pop that down on your surface and press down. If you want to use like a dowel to really get in that corner there, you can. I think the finger is just fine. And there you go, very simple. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put together the sides of our little wagon. So we're gonna start on the front and back and we're gonna get these glued down. Now you'll notice that um, there's a little bit of a, a, kind of the illusion of dimension there because this little brown piece is a little bit wider just on one side. Uh, you want to make sure that the bottom and the top are all nice and aligned and a little bit of that back piece is going to show through. So you want to put your glue on this piece here and go easy on it. Don't have to overdo it. Okay. There we go. And I'm just going to match it up at the bottom, making sure that that's nice and flush as well as the sides and then the rest of it will just kind of fall into place. Now I actually, this wood grain texture pattern, um, I hit this with some ink to give it a, a really nice rustic look because, <clears throat> well, wagons are, you use them, they're outside, they get beat, by, beat up by the sun and things of that nature. So I'll make it look, I'll make it look like it's, it's done some work. Okay, same thing with the other side and then the other two pieces, essentially the same thing, minus the fact that they're just a little bit wider. Okay, so you can see how much that inking really brings it to life. Okay, here we go. And now these two pieces, let's take a look at how this is going to sit. The bottoms and the sides obviously need to match up and then you'll notice that a little bit of that, that brown is coming through from behind the wood grain texture to kind of create that illusion of it being dimensional without actually being dimensional. So it's fun because we don't have to worry about building little two by fours and things of that nature. We can just piece a few pieces of paper together and create the illusion of dimension. Okay, if you've got a couple big globs of glue there, make sure you clean them off before you place it. And again, 
just um, just work on matching up the very perimeter. The rest of it will fall into place. Don't try to align anything in the center. Just the sides, the very ends, and that should do. And you can take a dowel too and just kind of roll it across like that. Just make sure all that glue really works into those nicks and crannies there. And that looks pretty darn good. Okay, so we'll do the same thing to the other one and then we'll apply this to the main structure here. And then we just have to create a quick little base. And then comes the fun part. So you are gonna need some, um, some floral, florist foam. Uh, I got my hot glue gun warming up already so that we can glue the floral foam to the inside of our wagon. Okay, I think that's good. Again, just focus on making sure that the, the outer perimeter lines up the inner dimension, the illusion will all fall into place. Okay, that looks good. Top and bottom are lined up. There we go. All right, that looks pretty spot on. So you can go ahead now and what we wanna do is we wanna glue the, the front and the back on first, like that. Okay, so go ahead and get your glue and just apply it to this entire piece here. Try to, try to get it all the way out to the bottom as well, as well as the top, maybe just a little bit in the center. And just pop that flush right onto one side. Doesn't matter which side, they're all the same. Front and back are identical. Just match that up nicely. Make sure it's nice and flush with the bottom. Okay, the rest of it should, you can also put this down on your table and push from the inside. So that will prevent any warping. There we go. Beautiful. All right, let's do the other end. Okay. And again, making sure that it is nice and aligned and flush with the bottom. The rest of it will just fall into place. You can kind of run your finger along both edges to make sure that in fact, it is lined up nicely. And then I'm gonna grab a dowel and use that to apply some pressure there. Make sure that everything sticks nicely. There you go, look at that. Okay, and that just leaves the two sides now. And the sides, are they're engineered so that they're slightly longer and wider than the actual surface here so that everything meets up nicely. So everything looks nice and seamless. And that will actually also hide the little perforations that we have there from our scoring. You'll notice that despite the fact that I have a Cricut Maker that can do solid score lines, I opt not to do that because I actually prefer the way that things fold with the perforated score marks. But we'll go the extra mile to make sure that, you know, if there are some score marks, that we do our best to hide them uh, with our little panels and such. I had a little bit of too much glue there. I'm gonna wipe that off before it starts smearing all over the place. Okay, so again, I would focus on lining it up with the bottom making sure that that's nice and flush, and then also kind of nudging it left or right to meet the other end pieces. Okay, there we go. And you can put that down on your surface and press down from there. Get that nice and connected, and there you go. See how nice those edges look? Beautiful. So all you have to do is the same thing on the other end now the other side, I should say. We'll get our glue on here. And we are just moments away from working on our little arrangement. I gotta get my, gotta get my moss out. And I'll work a little bit of that glue right up to the very top there. Okay, again, I would focus on getting it lined up and flush with the bottom 
before you drop it in place, check your left and right alignment. Just like that. Beautiful. That looks good. And then we just pop it down on our surface and press down. Get that to stick. And there's our there's our wagon. Beautiful. Look at that. Awesome. Okay. So all that's left to do now, um, if you want, uh, what you want to do is you know get some floral foam. And I don't think you really need to put it all the way out because the flowers are going to be fairly centered. So just make sure that you do have one um, somewhere in the middle because one of the flowers is going to go in the center. Okay, so I'm going to hot glue this now just to get it in place. And then we can work on the rest of the base of this thing in just a second. Get that in there. And we'll do one more here. Just enough. Just enough glue. I didn't have to get another stick, thank goodness. And just butt that up against the other one. And there we go. That should be enough. If not, um, well, you can always glue some more up on top. But I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Okay, so. And then check your work. Go all the way around. I've got a little area here that seems to be not completely stuck together. I'm going to take a little bit of glue on the end of a piece of paper. Just slide it into the little area that's not holding well. And then just give that a little extra focused, tender love and care. Okay, there we go. All right, so onto the base, which is very simple. It's just a little box. Everything's already pretty much connected for you. Um, I've already pre-folded everything. So what we're going to do, we're going to take these little triangular tabs, these small ones over here, and just apply a little bit of glue to them. We're going to tuck them in and connect them to our neighboring piece here. Let me get that glue on there. And just tuck that in and behind this piece here and give that a squeeze and hold until it's fully set. I'm not squeezing too hard, just very light pressure. You want to warp the paper. Okay. That should be good. Now we'll take our glue and next tab here. Just like that. And fold that in and tuck that right behind the neighboring piece there. Okay, hold that. Just be patient. This is, after all, foundation of everything, so we want to make sure that we do it right. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now, let me just move this out of the way. we got two more tabs here. You can do one at a time, I think. I think we should be able to get away with that. Throw a little bit of glue right on that. Just dab that. And fold that over. Get that. You can actually move this out of the way. This top, whoops. This top piece that you can get your finger in here better, like that. Just hold that for just a moment. And then we've got one more tab. Let me just close her up, and we can start putting everything together. Now, um, it may be a good idea to actually, depending on what type of foam you have, if you want to work on your arrangement before you glue the actual wagon to the base of the wagon, it may be a good idea, uh, only because if you start stabbing the you know, floral stems into the floral foam and you apply too much pressure, you may dent this thing or kind of crease it. So if you want, I'll show you that in a second here, but go ahead and close this up. Last tab there, last little triangular tab. Match it up with the edge of that side. This is the side here. And let that, give that an opportunity to stick and hold. Okay, and now all that's left is to close this up. Again, we're just kind of creating a little box. So to get our glue on all three of these tabs, we gotta do them all, all at once. And this is gonna be the bottom. So even if we don't do this perfectly, we're gonna flip it over and use the other side as the top. So 
it's, it's going to look perfect either way. But you definitely, this is good practice for gluing and working with tabs and, and boxes and such. And I would definitely, I wouldn't even hesitate to recommend this for a beginner because this is not, not a very tough project, especially if you follow along with me. All right, so flare these tabs up a tad and then take this little lid and fold her down. Focus on matching up the side opposite, the side where it's hinged. Make sure it's nice and straight. The rest of it should just kind of fall into place. If you need to kind of push a wall in a little bit, give it a little nudge, run your thumb or whatever finger along that seam there. Give that a second to hold and kind of just cover all of the surface area there just to make sure that it really all sticks. And I did a good job. There it is. <clears throat> okay. Now we're going to take this red piece and we're going to glue this right on top of this piece here. Now this is where you definitely want to be sparse with the glue. Let me clean off my nozzle a little bit. Okay. And probably could have been a little more sparse with it. That's okay. I'm going to kind of dab a little bit of these areas here that are maybe too much. Okay, that's fine. A lot of that's going to be hidden anyway. Get that right on top. Make sure it's nice and aligned all the way around. Okay, you'll notice that on this red piece that I just put down, there's a series of little score marks here. Okay, and those score marks are going to help us put this piece on there. Now you can see there that I've got a little bit of that coming off. I didn't get enough glue in that little area. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of glue on this scrap piece of paper and tuck it in between those two layers and just paint a little bit of glue right onto that area there that's not sitting flat. And take a look at all the other sides here. Make sure everything is nice and gelling. And if it's not, I'll grab that little scrap piece and paint a little extra glue in spots that might need it. And just press that down so that it will adhere nicely. And that looks perfect. Okay. So next up is this piece. This is um, kind of a long piece, uh, but it's going to serve as a guide for positioning this thing. And then of course we've got the little, um, little hitch piece right at the end of that. And we're going to glue one more layer onto that in just a second, but let's get this piece in place first. Just like that. And don't put any on the on that piece right there just yet. And then look at find your little score marks there, your little guides, and get that nice and centered. Because that's gonna also be where our wagon is gonna go when everything is all said and done. Okay. Make sure that is nice and flush. And then this extra piece here, just throw a little bit of glue on it. And it's just going <laughs> to, I suppose that if we ever connect some horses to this, and no, that's not, that's not like a, a hint or anything. Um, this will just be an extra layer just in case you do, you know, connect something to it. So I just slid that under because I ended up putting the glue on the wrong side. And actually, I think you should probably do that too because it makes it look more seamless. There we go. Okay, so ultimately, this is going to go on here like so. And we still need to put our wheels on the base. I think I'm gonna do that after uh, we finish up the actual arrangement. So let's do that now. Let's do the arrangement now. Okay, so I've got, I've got this moss. It's a, a nice, well, it's pretty dark in color. Um, I have some uh, real moss, and this is considered moss, but uh, I like this texture and I like this look because it almost looks like there's, there was hay in there or something, like some old hay. So I kind of went with this and I'm going to just fill in the sides a little bit more. And then once I get everything in here, what I'll typically do is I'll just grab some scissors. And if I have some strays sitting around after I get the flowers in, and if I don't like them, I'll just cut them off just to kind of tidy it up a little bit. Um, but let me just throw a little bit more in there and then we'll get our flowers in. And we've got some we got some other little elements that we're going to put in here to kind of fill this in a little bit more and we'll be done here. So going with, let's take a look and see what the height on this is. 
Um, we want it to be, we don't want it sticking up too much. So I'm just going to kind of see how tall that is if I was to shove it all the way in. And I'm going to trim off a little bit more of this floral stem because it doesn't need to go all the way down. Okay. And this one's going front and center. I guess it's middle center. <laughs> it's not really in the front. Okay. And I think that that height is pretty good. I can actually I can take this and use it to kind of push it down without ruining everything. Okay, so that one's going in the center. Let's see how that looks. That looks nice. Okay. And then I figure you want the little uh, leaves kind of poking out as well. And again, this one, that's too tall. So I'm going to trim that a little bit. Okay. And kind of, kind of focus on aiming them a little bit out towards one side. Okay, and these leaves, I'm gonna go right about there. I can grab this to grab the whole thing. And push that down, there we go. Okay, so the center one's gonna be a little bit up higher, and then the ones on the sides are gonna be a little bit lower. And let's take a look. That's way too much stem. Just cut some of that off. Okay, and we'll pop that right in. I want some more leaves coming out this way. And we did include some extra leaves in your extra folder, extras folder, should you want to fill this in even more. Okay, let's see how that looks. I think that looks darling. Okay, so. And then of course we do have some of this stuff and this you can just get at the craft store to add a little bit of, kind of fill that in. Anyway, you get the idea, just find some little greenery that you can stick in there on top of the paper elements just to kind of bring it to life and fill it in where you think it needs it just to kind of, you know, make it look nice and full. We don't want any, don't want any areas that are obviously super sparse. And just take your time getting it into your foam so that it doesn't pop out. Okay, so I'm gonna take some time here in a little bit to, to add that. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Just, and if anything, what I would suggest doing is once you get the arrangement in there, just walk away from it for a little bit. Come back with a fresh set of eyes and you know, give it another look. Let's see what you see what you think. Maybe you know, maybe like, oh well, you know what? Maybe this flower needs to go up a little bit, or this flower needs to go down a little bit, or you know, whatever it may be. And eventually you'll get it to where you like it, and then whoops. Everything will be in place for you because we're putting it into the foam. It shouldn't really move too much. Actually, this piece I'm gonna put over here. I'm gonna change the colors up a little bit. Where's your, where's the foam at? There it is. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. So um, anyway, you get the idea. I'm going to take a look at the final photo for more uh, details as far as how my final arrangement came out because again, I am going to walk away from this and give it another look with a fresh set of eyes after I get everything in the first time. But now that you've got it arranged, okay, you can go ahead and, well, you know what, first, let's get our wheels on. And all my wheels have been sitting under my mat so that they come out nice and flat for me. And what you'll notice is on this box is that there are a series of little score marks and that is to help you with the alignment, okay? And what you do is this piece here on the back, okay? This is gonna be, this brown part is gonna go up against this uh, base here, okay? And then the wheel, you want the wheel to hit just the edge of where that little marker is. So bump it right up to the edge and keep the brown piece lined up with this piece here. Okay, so just like that. 
and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put glue right down the center of this piece here, just like that. And I may have went a little overboard there, so I'm going to just dab that with my fingers. Okay, and again, just make sure that that brown piece is matched up and that you put it right up to the very edge of that little marker there. And this, this little spoke section, the center of it, should be like dead center on the little base structure here. Okay, so there's one. We'll do the next one. Go very easy on the glue here. We don't need a lot. Okay, we can probably do a little, tiny little circle there. Okay. And get that nice and centered, right up to that little marker. And you can push this down like this. There we go. Okay, other side. Just get your glue on this guy here, right down the center. You need a tiny little circle there. Okay, make sure the brown Part, this little brown strip there is on the brown base. Nudge that right up to that little marker. That'll keep everything nice and centered for you. Keep everything looking nice and symmetrical as well. Okay, and the last one. And I mean, you could do this in a different order. I guess you can. You could have put the uh, the flowers in place and things like that, and the the main part of the wagon but I didn't want to risk warping anything or damaging anything because of the downward force that we would be applying when we're working on our final arrangement. So I just decided to do it in this order so that we don't end up messing anything up. Okay, but there is the wagon with our wheels. And then of course, once you have your arrangement finalized, you can go ahead and put glue on the entire bottom and then just line it up with this black part on top of the wagon to complete your piece. Okay, let me turn this around so you can see it. Hopefully these wheels are, hopefully the wheels off the wagon don't just come off. Okay, there you go. And there's your beautiful centerpiece ready for fall, host or hostess gift, whatever it is. Mine's going on my table and I just cannot wait to decorate for fall this year. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button. It makes my little counter go up and every time it goes up, a uh, cat meows. Um, so I'd love for you to do that. If you enjoy hanging out with me, hit that subscribe button. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, we'd love to see it. So join us on the official group on Facebook by doing a search for Dreaming Tree Group where you can join myself and the 14,000 400 so dreamers that inspire us daily. Uh, so I look forward to seeing your projects and I look forward to crafting with you again. Stay on top of all things Dreaming Tree and engage with us today. Get the latest news and enter in our giveaways on Facebook. Get inspired by following us on Pinterest. Be the first to see our new product launches on Instagram. For Twitter? Yep, we're there too. Watch our beautiful product trailers and assembly tutorials on YouTube. For more information, visit www.3dsvg.com. Live, craft, love, and dream.